All right, Lightning Conversion Blade Vortex Pathfinder Build Guide. Let's go. So this character was uh, basically my attempt at making a Blade Vortex build that has good clear speed again since the nerfs in previous leagues. And I've gone to do so utilizing the explosions from the new Impulse's Broken Heart Body Armor. Basically it's a uh, similar to Obliteration Blade Vortex style build. The main difference being you actually get to wear a shield and a melee weapon so you get to shield charge which helps your speed out a ton. So I'm going to toss in a map, pretty easy one, uh, elemental equilibrium, some boss life, so the boss will be a bit tanky, but otherwise, nothing too hard. Show it off a bit, and then we will get into the details of the build. So like I said, it's a, a build that was made to kind of put Blade Vortex back in as a fast build, since I really like this skill, and it's kind of been in a rough spot lately. So you'll see pretty quickly, I can... uh kind of just zoom through maps with a combination of blade vortex plus the explosions plus light poacher adding even more explosions and everything just kind of dies right away don't have to worry about the awkward slow tick rates on your blade vortex you just kind of cruise through the maps and it's pretty tanky good HP pool thanks to mind over matter and being able to get a lot of extra mana nodes from some flask nodes the boss damage is pretty good, could be a bit better, but it's enough to kill map bosses even in like a tanky map like this. You'll see, he's gonna pull his sword out, but that's fine. That's about as tanky as they get, a Dunes boss with a couple extra mods, but still pretty much no problem. And one thing the build is utilizing is, I called it a conversion. Blade Vortex, we are actually converting 100% of the physical damage to lightning damage with a combination of the physical to lightning support gem and the Vinkdar's unique flask and a unique Watcher's Eye Jewel with extra conversion while you have Wrath. And all three of those together goes over 100% conversion, so we aren't dealing any physical damage whatsoever as long as the flask is up which lets us scale lightning damage specifically, which gives us damage on the blade vortex and the explosions at the same time. It's really nice, helps the explosions. Pretty much one shot packs, you just get one explosion and then anything that's shocked kind of just kills everything else. And the explosions can chain, assuming you have, you know, some source to shock since the explosions themselves can't shock. But the Vinktars also provides that with a nice AoE shock. So, let's get into the gear of the build, right here. We've got, obviously, body armor, you need the Impulse's Broken Heart, that is 100% required, it's kind of the core piece of the build. As far as other required unique items, uh, you're really going to want an Essence Worm, which is lets you run an aura for free, really powerful in general for Mind Over Matter builds. But the Impulse's, which gives us the Explosions, also gives... A lot of shock effect which comes into play especially against bosses since you're hitting less often with blade vortex now it actually plays to the advantage of shock and even up to like t14 map bosses i'm actually capable of inflicting the full 50 percent shock depending on the map mods and depending how tanky the boss is from those mods but the full 50 percent shock thanks to all the extra shock effect and just big hits of damage that you're getting in so that's really, really powerful. And then another unique that I've been using is the Impresence Onyx Amulet. It's a new unique from the Elder, the Lightning variant. Generally, is pretty cheap compared to the rest because not many people are using it, but it's another very powerful item. It lets you run, normally it lets you run Conductivity for free, kind of like how the Essence Worm works, but it's 100% reduced reservation. So when you combine that with the 40% increased from the essence worm for you know your extra auras you end up preserving a little bit but it's like 15% of your mana to run conductivity blasphemy lowers all the lightning res makes it even more easy to shock if you don't crit really powerful overall most of the other items the gloves the boots just rares your other ring pretty much just a rare you're looking for life and res and all those defensive stats you need 
Your shield, you want a shield with life and spell crit. That's kind of mandatory, those two stats, because you really need to get your crits as consistent as possible to help the clear speed. Ideally, you're going to want lightning damage as a prefix if you can afford that as well. Otherwise, spell damage is also good. It's not as powerful, but they're about the same price. And then for a weapon, uh, you're looking for a shaper weapon. I've got mine here as an example. The one I'm using, uh, the main stats, you really want the gain physical damage as extra lightning damage. That's just a huge DPS increase for your blade vortex. And then aside from that, you're going to want a, a lightning damage prefix or an elemental damage prefix, which shaper mods can also give you that. You can see the lightning penetration uh, support on my weapon. That comes with the 52% lightning damage. You also want attack speed, preferably, you know, close to 20 or higher. And then area damage is a good stat. Crit multi is a good stat. Physical damage gained as fire is good. Physical damage gained as a random element. All of those just big DPS boosts are good, but the main ones you're going to want are the fizz as lightning, the lightning damage, and the attack speed are the core three. For your helmet, you can use a rare if you just really hate Light Poacher, but there's not really any reason not to use Light Poacher. It's just really, really powerful as a clear speed item. And it gives pretty good stats too, since it gets that one Abyss Socket. Helps you out with your damage some more. Similarly with the belt, you want to go with a Darkness and Throne of the new unique Abyss Belt. Gets two Abyss Sockets. And that kind of combos with your helmet to give you some more of the Abyss Jewels to build up extra spirit charges. And again, it's it's just a good belt. You can get roughly up to about 150 life. Usually you'll be sitting probably at about 120 from it. With some DPS stats, some resists if you need it, whatever. And then for the flasks. It's a Pathfinder build. Flasks are usually pretty important. The main one, the big boy is the Vessel of Vinktar, which is actually extremely cheap this league. They don't really uh, have the super meta use anymore since the Vault Pack nerf. But the Shock Aura, even though you're shocking yourself against most bosses and getting a stronger shock than what the Vinktars applies, it's giving you an AoE shock that allows you to more consistently get your Impulsive Explosions, even if you're running maps that have high chance for monsters to avoid ailments. And then the conversion, obviously, is super powerful. Anytime you're converting your Fizz to more Lightning, you're giving it extra pen that the Fizz didn't have since you're going to have a Lightning pen and you're going to have Conductivity. And then you're also making your Wrath Aura scale the damage where it wasn't when it was physical. So that's really important to get. Like I said, they're really cheap. They're not hard to get. Other than that, uh, you can see on the right side, I've got these ones listed. Taste of Hate, best in slot for your defensive flask. If you can't afford it, uh, Basalt Flask works. Or if you really just want some damage, you can even use an Aziri Flask. I was using that for a while, it works just fine. Writhing Jar, the Worm Flask, not mandatory, but it's really powerful against bosses specifically since your only real source of Mana Leech is going to be coming from most likely your boots with the Lab Enchant for life and Mana Leech if you've killed recently. So you have to have killed something, and against a boss you may not have, but you spawn the worms, you kill the worms, and you get the leech. Turns out, also added bonus, the worms from the flask can give you spirit charges for your light poachers. So they also help a little bit on clear speed, kind of, sort of, which is really nice. And then for your non-unique flasks, a diamond flask, your crit build, you have to use a diamond flask. Quicksilver flask, you need to go fast, gotta go fast. And I think that covers all the flasks. For the jewels, I'll show some more of them when I go over the tree in a minute. But the two uniques you're going to want, I mentioned earlier, the Watcher's Eye with Wrath Conversion. You can alternatively use uh, physical damage gained as lightning. They're honestly pretty comparable in strength. The reason I go with the conversion one is because they're cheaper than the physical gained as lightning. If you got one with both, that would be insane. If you got one with one of them and then the Mana Leech while under Wrath, that would also be insane. But you're really just looking for that extra boost to lightning damage. And then also your other, your second unique jewel is an intuitive leap, which I'll show in a minute as well. It's letting you get your charge generation. And aside from the uniques, you're kind of just looking for generic stats. I've got them listed there. One thing to mention that you do need to make sure you grab is at least one abyss jewel with chance to gain onslaught on kill 
ideally you want the 6 to 8% roll. And that's your source of onslaught, which just helps you zoom through the maps quicker again. So let's move on to the passive tree now. Get this out of the way. First things first, let's show the unique jewels I was talking about. The intuitive leap is right here. And it's letting you hop into Dreamer, which is a really powerful mana node since you're mind over matter. Melding, which is a pretty good life node. I mean, it's not that important, but it's there. It's free. And then, most importantly, Overcharge, which gives 8% chance to gain basically a random charge on kill. And that's giving you your generation for all three charges. And since we're a fast build, you can kind of sustain those charges through the majority of the map. But then for the Ascendancies, we've got... Nature's Boon, Master Alchemist, getting you the immunity to ailments, and then a bunch of elemental damage which scales the explosions. Veteran Bowyer, Fizz Damage is a random element, good for DPS. The Pen is really good for DPS, and then the 100% increased Flask Charges is very strong for keeping your Vinktars up pretty much all the time. So those six points are your top priority. You're getting those by Merciless Lab. And then Uber Lab, you're going to want Nature's Adrenaline, just another clear speed node. Other than that, you can see it's a pretty straightforward um, up here crit mind over matter tree. The only awkward part is that since you are a ranger, you have to start down here. It works a little bit in our favor because there's some good flask nodes that are also mana nodes. And since we're a pathfinder and we're mind over matter, they're really strong. So we kind of just grab those, book it up to the shadows, start getting life nodes, crit nodes. And then we just move our way across the tree, mostly getting life nodes and crit nodes. A little bit of lightning damage, shock effect, crackling speed's really powerful, some area, more flask stuff. And then, like I said, Mind Over Matter is the only keystone we're taking. Mostly just for that big buff to defense. And then we're grabbing whatever jewel sockets we can along the way. So here's an example of like one of the regular jewels that you're going to be looking for. For the most part, regular jewels are actually better than Abyss Jewel since they can double dip into, not really double dip, but they can affect your Blade Vortex and your Explosions. And they're cheaper compared to Abyss Jewels right now, which is very nice. So like Life, Lightning Damage, and Crit Multi are probably your top three stats you're looking for. You might need some res. I have one down here with a little bit of res to help out a bit as well. But yeah, that's the tree. I'll have a link to the tree in the description if you want to look over it in more detail. And then for the Bandits, you are helping Alira. You need that res. You need that crit multi. Both are really strong. And you kind of get limited on where you can get all res on the build. So, enough of the tree. Let's go to the gems for the character. Right here, I've got this image. This one and the one for the gear will also be down in the description. Your main links, Blade Vortex, Fizz to Lightning, Spell Echo, Critical Strikes, Lightning Pen... That's your 5 link. If you get a 6 link, you're adding in the AoE and then swap to concentrated effect on bosses. But you don't actually need the AoE. So I found it easier to just stick to lightning pen as your 5th link instead of worrying about the gem swaps and stuff. Other than that, uh, you can see the light poacher gems. They are there to give the light poacher some more clear speed overall. In your weapon, you've got your normal shield charge stuff. General castle damage taken stuff in the gloves. Your Blasphemy, and then a second cast and damage taken listed in the boots. Um, the Vortex isn't that powerful, I just couldn't really find anything else to put in those sockets, but when you get hit, you know, it puts a little chilled ground, which is nice. And then you've got your utility stuff in the shield, your Flame Dash, your Decoy Totem. And then obviously Wrath in your ring slot, so that it doesn't cost any mana. And it is free, thanks to the Essence Worm. One thing you might notice is there's no control destruction in the main links. It's a slight DPS increase over a few of the gems there, but thanks to the way that the build works, I felt the consistency of having the higher crit chance is just overall better, even if you lose a tiny bit of single target DPS. Control destruction lowering your crit is just not a very good time for clear speed consistency. Other than that, I think all we've got left to cover is the leveling. Unfortunately, it's a ranger build, and it's a caster, so you're going to want leveling uniques. If you don't have leveling uniques, um, you're going to have a rough time trying to level as a caster. You may just want to do something with bows. I don't know exactly what, but I'm going to go over what you can do if you do have the leveling uniques, because the only one that really costs anything is a tabula. Hopefully at this point you can uh, 
can grab one. But here we go. Leveling gems. You've got the tabula links. Um, the skill we are choosing to level with is Spark. Which, we picked that because Ranger gets a lot of access to projectile nodes at the start. And I'll link a leveling tree uh, with all that Spark stuff. But Spark is really, really powerful up through, like, Act 5. It just kind of crushes everything. Straight from level 1, you can have Spark with Onslaught and Pierce and Arcane Search. You've got a 4 link right away. Really good. And then, as you kind of get more and more of your projectile nodes, and you can grab a Vol Spark, it just kind of it clears really fast. And the boss damage is good enough thanks to having the leveling items. Like I said, the other thing you're going to have is a Vol Spark. Helps with some extra clearing. can help burst bosses. Early on, you're going to be having a... You're going to be using Flame Dash for your mobility. And then what I usually do is usually around Act 6. Um, I'll drop one of my unique weapons, which you can see listed on the right. I have Axiom. Those are really good. They can carry you really high level. But I'll usually drop one for a shield to start shield charging around Act 6, maybe Act 5. Helps the speed out, and the Fortify helps defensively. You're going to want to Orb of Storms for bosses. You're get, using that to curse on hit, and then it also gives you a little boost of damage. And then you just got your utility stuff. For the uniques, you can see them on the right. Tabula, Karu Reward, pretty much everything. Rather cheap. Darkness Enthroned, I think, is still a few chaos. Not a big deal. And then the big thing is, you're only doing this Spark stuff until level 53. As soon as you hit 53, you're putting on a Light Poacher. You don't like Light Poacher? Too bad. Put it on. It's OP. Um, so you can put that on, and then what that enables you to do is you start leveling super fast. Because most of the nodes you've been getting are spell and projectile related, so it's already being scaled pretty well. And then at the same time, you can start from there on grabbing your area damage nodes or your other crit nodes. And it kind of lets you make this more streamlined shift to Blade Vortex instead of just going from straight Spark to Blade Vortex, which don't really share a lot of nodes. And it's more awkward that way. So it lets you shift more smoothly and you can go from level 53 to level 70 in like an hour in harbor bridge using light poacher it's just really strong so that kind of covers the leveling like i said i'll put a bunch of links in the description for all the leveling stuff all the tree stuff the gear stuff all those images and i think that covers just about everything so yeah i've really been enjoying this build i think it's the most fun I've had so far this league, just because I'm a huge fan of Blade Vortex. And if you like Blade Vortex, but you haven't played it recently just because of the nerfs, I really would suggest trying this build. Like I said, I think it's a ton of fun. Thanks guys for watching, and I will see you next time.